Right, morning everyone, and well done for coming. So, uh, we started our discussion on high lift systems or high lift devices last week, and uh, <clears throat> I did explain very quickly why we need high lift devices. The reason for that is during takeoff and landing, well, one way of looking at it is during takeoff and landing, the aircraft can only do that at low speeds, okay? But those low speeds, they themselves have to be higher than the stalling speed of the aircraft because you don't want to fly the aircraft as a pilot very near to the stalling speed. So how do you compensate that to get the uh, required lift is to use high lift devices to do that for you. So we stopped at the slide where we said we can generally divide them into two main types. The first one is trailing edge devices and leading edge devices. So what I'm going to do today, this is of course a very complex subject and gets really complicated and uh, interesting, but I'm just gonna give you an overview of some of the concepts that you might find interesting and for particularly those who might have some practical experience if they kind of try to relate to those, some ideas. Right, so uh, someone gives you like a picture of the aircraft like this, actually is an incredibly complex machine, uh, particularly in terms of all these small uh, uh, systems that you see on the wing in terms of ailerons, high lift devices, uh, the tail itself. It's a very complicated machine. And you guys can imagine when we design these things, um, all the all the complex things we don't actually see from the outside of the aircraft that actually operate the, these, uh, these systems. So it really makes the whole thing uh, very complicated, but nonetheless very necessary. So if we start with leading edge devices, uh, so we can actually generally divide them into a number of types, the main ones really. Either leading edge slats, which usually they have a, a slot with them as well, uh, leading edge droop nose, or leading edge flaps. One of the famous one is the Kruger, Kruger flap. So I have a picture here showing you uh, some of those. So we got, for example, uh, so the, this is the leading edge slat. So it's, it's deflected downwards, typically at an angle delta. That's called the, uh, the deflection angle. And typically there is a gap as well as, uh, as it's being operated. We can have a Kruger flap. This is basically, the f it's actually underneath of the leading edge. It actually extends downwards and then moves a little bit forward, as you guys can, can see, hopefully. So when it, it retracts down uh, backwards, it actually kind of goes this way and back underneath the wing. Um, also, we can have a simple... I can't see the droop. Oh, yeah, the droop nose here. So this is kind of, in a way, like a kind of a, a, almost a morphing flap up in front of the wing. So all these concepts are various ways of trying to have these leading edge devices to help the aircraft uh, have that extra lift that required a, a, in low speed takeoff and landing. Okay. So uh, this is just another picture here just to show you. So for example, we can have a leading edge slot with no slot. Uh, we can have one with a fixed slot. So actually some aircraft, they have a fixed design like this. So you just have the leading edge slot here in front of the wing, it's probably mainly for low speed aircraft or small, small scale, not small scale, but smaller aircraft. They have this design because you can imagine it's quite simple, but they don't move. Um, of course, a lot of them are hinged flaps. So you've got here a hinged nose flap. Uh, this is just showing you, for example, uh, this could be like a Kruger flap, for example, in the open position and in the closed position. Hopefully you can guys see, trace the flap here. As I said, it's underneath the wing. And if it's open, it kind of goes down and moves forward. So this, this is just some ideas there. Obviously this is not an exhaustive list. So if you are interested, ever, you can uh, go and read about them. So I'm just going to focus on probably three types, I think, uh, starting with uh, leading edge slots, because these are actually, turn, they turn out to be one of the most efficient uh, types of leading edge devices. So what is a leading edge slot? Is a thin curved or cumbered surface, which is typically attached to the leading edge of the, uh, the wing portion. 
And what it does, as we will see, is actually in the end increases the, the stall angle of attack. And of course, if you guys remember from the lift curve, if you can increase the stall angle of attack, you are effectively uh, having more lift or more CL. So basically, you're delaying the point at which stall occurs and therefore flow separation, which will give you, obviously, a higher CL max that you need. Um, of course, they can be operated manually, automatically. So let me just kind of give you uh, some brief explanation of how this thing can work. So we have here a picture of a main wing, which is this one here, and in front of it, there is a leading edge slab, which is in operation. And the, uh, the, the angle of attack here is, goes from uh, 10 to about 30, okay? And we're taking, as an example, this is just an example, the NACA 4412. So the first thing you guys can notice is typically we have a slot between the leading edge slot and the main wing, okay? So you guys can see that slot. That is a very interesting part of the design of the whole thing. Because what happens is, as the flow goes around the, uh, the aircraft wing, in addition to the speed up effect we usually have on the main wing, so we have high speed on the main, on the upper surface of the wing, we also now, this gap is actually uh, helping the whole wing in the following way. So what happens is the air from underneath the wing actually rushes through the gap very at, at high speed, okay, so it has a very high kinetic energy. And as it does so, it goes through and then above the, uh, or on the top of the main wing, okay? So it it's, it's goes through here, it speeds up, and then it goes uh, on the upper surface. And what it does actually, it's because it's, it's high energy fluid, it's adding energy, or kinetic energy to the boundary layer. So the boundary layer becomes, uh, will have a lot higher energy than what it, 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 uh, with, it would have without it. So that we call that the, uh, the Venturi effect. It's basically the speed up effect of the flow causing lower pressure. So basically this gap is now basically uh, modifying the pressure distribution around the main wing. So it, the, main, the key idea there is uh, it energizes the boundary layer of the main wing. So the boundary layer of the main wing therefore can remain attached to a much higher angle of attack which will allow it to create more lift. So in effect, what you're trying to do is you're delaying the flow separation as much as possible, and that allows actually the wing to fly effectively at much higher angle of attack than uh, without the leading edge slat. So apparently here, uh, if you take the NACA 4412 without the leading edge slat extended, then the angle of attack for stall is about 15 degrees. Using the leading edge slat, uh, you can actually in, uh, increase that to about, 30, to about 30 degrees, which is obviously uh, uh, clearly a huge uh, advantage for, for, the, for the wing, okay? So that's it. So the key idea here is energizing the boundary layer to delay flow separation, allowing the wing to fly effectively at higher angle of attack and delaying the stall. This is the key concept of uh, this device. So... Uh, kind of plotting things on the CL curve is probably easier to see. So we have here the CL versus alpha. Um, so uh, basically the thick line, the first one is this is where, this is just the normal lift curve for the kind of the clean wing with no uh, leading edge uh, device being activated. So just normal, but we notice there is a stall angle at this position here. Now if we add uh, a leading edge slot, for example, what it, what it does effectively, as I told you, it allows the, the wing then to extend its, its, its lift to a much higher stall angle. So the stall angle, which was here, let's say, what do we say here? Uh, let's say 13 or 14, maybe. And then we, you can extend it, let's say in here, about 20-ish. So this is all due to the leading edge device. So apparently, uh, with the uh, leading edge slats, we can increase the CL max by about 70%, which is obviously very good. And if the angle of attack itself, the, the, sorry, the stall angle of attack by 10 degrees or more. Uh, now, remember I told you the whole reason for having CL max or wanting to increase the CL max is to reduce the stall speed. All pilots will tell you they want the stall speed to be as low as possible. Um, so, 
effectively using the leading edge devices here, what we, what we are doing we are, by increasing the CL max, we're reducing the store speed. And this, the, the reduction can be by up, up to 10 meters per second. And the good thing as well is that uh, there is typically a low drag penalty at uh, within, well, within certain limits, we will see, but uh, not, not a huge drag penalty usually. Also, if uh, the, the longer the, the cord, because this is just a plate, it has a cord, the leading edge slat. So the longer the cord of the leading edge slat, the greater the CL max, and therefore the lower the stall angle. So, of course, you guys can imagine, as I told you, typically, obviously, obviously here we have the, uh, the, the, the design of the leading edge slot itself. We can control the gap. So, suddenly, the gap becomes a, a very important design parameter. And actually, if you look in the research papers, people have looked at various designs of the gap itself, uh, in addition to the design of the leading edge slot as well, and see kind of what is the best combination for a given wing that gives you the maximum CL max with the minimum drag. Um, and of course, once you take off, for example, you don't need the leading edge slot after that, so the pilot just restructs those, okay? So, uh, as a summary, the leading edge slot and all the leading edge devices, their concept is to extend the, uh, the, uh, stalling the stall angle of the wing to a much higher angle of attack allowing the aircraft, of course, to have a higher CL, which they need, and take off and landing. That's the key concept there. So in terms of the operation, uh, so uh, it's some, some of them, they just move forward, creating that gap. Okay, and some of them, they move forward and also go downwards. So translation and rotation. Okay, so it's typical operations for those devices. Uh, this is just automatic and manual. So basically, all aircraft usually these days are all have automatic uh, operation for these devices. But sometimes, if the automatic operation doesn't work, the pilot might have to intervene. Intervene, sorry, using um, a kind of a mechanical device or something that they have to do manually. Okay, so kind of the manual operation might become. It's increasingly becoming kind of the second option rather than the main option. Of course, we're all trying to make aircraft smarter and smarter and relying more on technology rather than the pilot has to do everything. But uh, on a lot of aircraft, the manual operation, it's still there just in case. The other thing, uh, the other two I will just show you here, kind of a very common ones, are the Kruger flap. So it's just uh, someone called Kruger, I guess, uh, designed that one. So it's a leading edge flap as well. And it tries to do something similar to the leading edge slat. But it is actually less, uh, less uh, effective than the leading edge slat. And then we, we talk also about the droop, uh, the droop design. OK. So the Kruger leading edge flap. So hopefully you can see it here. So this is a portion of the leading edge portion of or portion of the leading edge of the wing so with all you know the parts there some of the parts shown but anyway so this is the uh, the flap in operation and here hopefully if you guys imagine this goes back it kind of then it's uh, it's put back underneath the wing okay so this is kind of this is where it resides here okay so basically it goes down moves forward and what it does, it again, it tries to accelerate the flow. So the fact that you're doing this, what you're doing is kind of you're creating a bit of camber, and then that accelerates the flow. It energizes the boundary layer, very similar to uh, the leading edge slot. But obviously here, there is no gap, for example. Okay, and um, yeah, so it, it creates similar effect to the leading edge slot. However, what people have found apparently is. Because what you're effectively also trying to, uh, you're creating here is the leading edge or the effective leading edge of the, um, of the wing will have a higher uh, radius. And that sometimes can create flow separation around this area here. So one of the problems with Kruger flap is the leading edge flow separation, okay? Which obviously we don't want. But hopefully with, uh, if, if the pilot knows their aircraft very well, they will know to what extent they should operate the flap and hopefully to avoid that. But that is a problem sometimes that can occur. The droop nose, uh, again, 
very similar. So but it's, as you guys can see, it just, just goes down, droops like this. Um, but is that word? I don't know. I'm just making up words. So, but obviously, it's, you guys can see it's not like the flap. So it's, it's a whole kind of section going down. But actually, in terms of effect, it's similar to a Kruger flap or a leading edge flap. So again, we, uh, we're affecting the, we're changing the effective camber towards the leading edge, which allows the flow to accelerate and hopefully energizes the boundary layer as well. Uh, it turns out from experience, this is good for moderate to low angles of attack. So it's not the best one for high angles of attack. But leading edge slats are actually can go to a lot higher angles of attack. And that's why they are the most uh, efficient out of these three. Just some pictures there just to keep you awake. So we have the uh, leading edge slats here. As you guys can see them, uh, the Airbus guys are laughing because I thought about you when I got these pictures, like they would like that. <laughs> so this is kind of a PR stunt at UE. So also we have the trailing edge flap. We haven't talked about trailing edge flaps as well, but uh, this is the, uh, is it correct? Is this the Airbus 390? Yes. Yes. How did you know? <laughs> Jack, come on, man. How did you know? <laughs> well, how did you know this is the Airbus? Huh? <laughs> Can't see the nose. Right. Apparently, this one is the uh, Boeing 737, just to annoy you guys. By the way, do they tell you a lot about Boeing? No. You, you don't like them. Wait a minute. They're the ones who are keeping you very well because you have to worry about your competition, right? If there is no one competing, you will be just slacking, isn't it? Honestly, when I did my degree in aerospace in Southampton, we had this American guy from uh, Boeing. He was teaching us aircraft systems, something like that. There was no lecture without him trying to say something bad about Airbus. Basically, along the lines, these guys know nothing. We kind of everything. So he was so full of himself. I don't know why. But it's just later on you realize, yeah, obviously there is a huge competition between the two. But I think it's actually a very healthy competition. Because I'm sure there are a lot of people in Airbus, they're following or trying to predict what Boeing are doing, and vice versa, Boeing, I'm sure, they're working very hard to see what Airbus can come up with and beat them to, to it. But it's good. I think it's good for everyone. Anyway, so these are just uh, pictures for leading edge devices there being operated. So I thought maybe just to compare those leading edge devices uh, uh, kind of on one graph, let's look at First of all, the effect on the lift curve for various designs. So we have the first one here. This is kind of the clean wing, position zero. So uh, the leading edge devices are not operated. And then, uh, for example, number one, what's number one? No, sorry, this is, let's start from here. I'm not sure what zero is actually. Uh, ignore that, sorry. Yeah, one is, uh, the no, yeah, I want to talk about this, sorry. So the number one is no leading edge. Number two, this is the, uh, for example, using uh, the droop nose design. Number three, a nose flap, okay, but doesn't have to be Kruger flap. And number four is the Kruger flap. Number five, this is why I told you, is the, uh, uh, the leading edge slot, okay? So you guys can see these, these two to five, they have clearly different effects uh, on extending the stall angle for, for the main wing. So obviously, a number five is the most efficient. So this is why I kind of, I kind of highlighted those. Another thing here I just wanted to share with you is, honestly, I won't ask you about this in the exam, but this is just for illustration. So this is how the CL Max varies with the, uh, the sweep angle of the wing. In this case, it's uh, sweeping uh, backwards. So as you guys can see, generally, for, for an, we have a large number of aircraft here, and they all show similar trend in that as you increase the sweep of the, uh, the, sweep of the wing, unfortunately, your CL max will go down, which is actually very interesting because obviously we, 
uh, we sweep the wings, as we said last time, to allow it to fly faster, right? Which is to go to faster and faster Mach numbers. And actually, in reality, what aircraft manufacturers do, they actually optimize their design for the high speed because that's where you spend most of your time. Whereas the low speed is kind of, kind of worked out as a compromise or kind of secondary, secondary design. Uh, and you guys can see here, actually, this is basically telling you if you increase the, the, uh, the sweep of the wing to allow it to grow faster, which is the main uh, section of your flight, how you, you, you need to think about your CL max as well in takeoff and landing. It's not just something you do and then, yeah, in the cruise everything is fantastic, but then you have to think about your takeoff and landing phases as well. And this sh clearly shows that the CL max you get from your aircraft reduces with the sweep. Right? So you can't just design things in isolation. That's the key point there. So it's kind of nice linking the, the cruise phase with takeoff and landing in terms of CL max.